Hi everyone, welcome back to Corona Blossom, Volume Three, Episode Nine. So, Katie's pushing a very aggressive schedule to get RNA back into space, and according to plan, they have less than a day to do the launch. And Katie feels confident that everything is going to be ready within two days. Thanks to Uni, and also that the townspeople were working overtime to have this launch mechanism built up and ready to go. So the mass driver, and before the launch, Shino wants to hold a farewell party for Arne, where everyone gets to say their goodbyes, and I'm sure it's going to be a very touching moment, even for Arne. Who is kind of sad that he's going to depart from Hama Town for good? So, anyways, let's see what happens today and what they're going to do to make sure this launch is perfect in one go. So, we are wrapped in the scent of detergent. We work. Up a good sweat, gather together our laundry and put it out to dry, and that's how we round out the morning at least. And we slurp down some noodles for lunch, and then go for a walk around town. The exercise aiding our digestion. In this way, we leisurely run down the little time we have left together. <laughs> So basically, the launch will happen shortly after noon. Oh, it's some of the older man children in the room start sniggering. The maid cafe, which is now completely transformed into an assembly room, is bursting with people. It's reserved for our personal use all through today and tomorrow. Okay, so here's the plan. In our schedule. Uni's or Unison's calm voice drifts across the wide air condition room. And Shino san and I listen in the corner. Yeah, even if you don't count the people directly involved in the project, that's still a lot. And I'm constantly impressed by the fact that business in this place is still running. Oh yeah, you're right. I guess the launch of the Sentry is just being tested or treated like some kind of festival as well. Though that does not, or at least, mean everybody's putting their all into the project. They do love their festivals. <laughs> well, that's true. And as we giggle together in the corner, Unison clears her throat empathetically. We realize that she must be talking about something important. And sit bolt upright in our seats. So, the time table is all right. Let's see what the director of the company is doing. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. 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 I'm not sure the crowd sounds impressed, but Yuni-san does not look too pleased. Lily-sama, 
So we got to at least let them know what is going on. So don't just have the underlings give orders to the people. So そうだな。お手上げだ。でもまんが一の if you try to explain to them, Uni, everyone's going to end up with questions. And basically, they'll be confused. Well, I guess that's true. So, if Lily thinks that the people don't have enough knowledge and skill to do all this, carry out all the executions, what can they let them do, and why would they bring them here? So her harsh words cause a bit of a stir. Lily, who's standing on a chair, puts one foot on the table. てめえらは最高の仕事をした。しかも今日この日打ち上げの前日までにだ。こちらの想定以上に装置を仕上げてみせた。なら、あとはこっちの問題だ。安心しな。私たちはバンバが大砲ぶっ放してきた宇宙の
and this turned into more of a pep rally than a proper play meeting. If it helps steal everyone's team spirit though, then I guess it's all good. All well. And it must be second nature for pirates to get their crews going like this. So after the meeting, so I think the problem was that Uni was explaining things that were so complicated and hard for people to understand and it kind of felt boring and then it was like, well, don't give them the details, they won't understand it. Let's just focus on the big things. So first, thank them for their work at getting the launch mechanism ready and second, it's like, well, we still got to stick together for this event. So anyways. So where's Kimiko and Arne? Um, Kimiko says she has something to do and left with one of the, of the underlings. And for Arne, the date and time of the party is being kept secret from her, so some kids took her to play in town. Nothing, I guess. All the preparations are done, so there's nothing left for me to do. So I'm sure the underlings are like, well, Shinotan, you've been doing a lot of work, so it's time for us to shine, so why don't you sit back and... Yeah, well, why don't the two of us go ahead and try to find Arne? So we meet up with Arne and end up playing with her until sunset, having some great fun together. So, Okay, so now they're down to just 16 hours ago, and it's now time for the farewell party. So, let's just get right into it. So, no of that introduction and the formalities. And the sooner we can end this party, the more time we'll be able to sleep and prepare for the actual event tomorrow. Afternoon. And the party gets underway in the usual fashion, and soon the room is buzzing. なんか母ちゃんの伸びきったパンツのゴムみたいな So, unfortunately, the older people have to get drunk and now they're rambling, and it seems that Arndi does not enjoy those kinds of comments. Well, that's still no different from usual. In her usual way, Arne withdraws from the crowd. She sits down on my lap. <laughs> okay. 
So Shino-san, who's sitting next to me, pats her on the head. Arne smiles happily up as we, or at us in return. So seriously, so whenever there's a party, those guys always end up showing their true colors. Well, it's like, well, we've been putting so much work into getting that mass power driver ready, the launch mechanism. So now that it's finished, let's take a break and we should really space out, which involves them getting drunk. Uh oh, so it's the old ladies again. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, they're all lighting or fighting over you, Arne. You're so popular. Well, I don't like this kind of party. I want to be like a star, not some toy. So Arne gets pulled away by the arm and Shino's son sees her off with a smile and a wave. And I feel like she's the one toying with Arne the most. Hey, what's up? You look so happy watching everyone amuse themselves with Arne and making Arne feel uncomfortable. Yeah, well at first, she just spaced out all the time and never really bothered interacting with people around town. So they're actually playing with Arne, I think? Well, I would say that they're torturing Arne. But, let's see, folk around here just don't know how to mind their own business. I can't imagine Arne getting a bit annoyed sometimes. That's true, now that you mention it. And the vociferous complaining she's doing right now is a clear expression of her own will. And she has distinct ideas of what she likes and what she does not like. And I can barely see her hit it in the crowd, but that's precisely what makes me happy. The lonely girl who came down to earth all by herself one summer day is now able to interact with all sorts of different people. So that same girl will soon be returning to the vast emptiness of space. Mm. Help! They're bullying me! They're torturing me! Okay, so I think we need a helper. Well, what now? Do you get kidnapped by a space band or something? And making stupid jokes, I approach Arne. Hey, so whose baby is this? Well, 
ってどうすればいいのねしのちょっと預からせてくれるこんな風にねもうちょっと肘の内側に首を乗せるように抱っこして片手はこんな感じで。すごいしの濡れてるなんでもしかしてもう子供産んだことあるの<笑>そんなことないって結婚もまだなの知ってるよねただ単に時々銭湯の番台に座ってる時にお客さんの赤ちゃんを預かることがあるだけ Oh yeah well it gives me a real scare when I first saw you holding me Or holding one. So smiling, Shino san holds the or hands the baby over to Arne with. Practiced ease. And I've always thought of Arne as a child, so I'm not sure what to make of this. So, as Arne talks to the baby, she pokes her let's see, softly in the forehead with her pinky finger. Yeah, they're so cute and innocent. So it reminds me of the old days when you, so Shino, and Keiji were both babies, and. Well, she does not need to know about that. <laughs> so, where do you learn about that? Okay, so it's now time for the next part of the event. So, what should I talk about? わたしがリリ様のように脳を使わずその場の思いつきで喋っているとでもうーんやっぱり冗談じゃなかったのかうん宇宙海賊は息をするみたいに口から出まかせが溢れる人ばかりじゃないってことなんだねてめえらナチュ
So they have Arne dressed up in like a princess or like a pageant outfit and you can see the little ribbon and the crown and I think she's sitting on a throne or something. Wait, she's not. But anyways, Arnie does not like all this decorations. But the other people do. Well, that's cute of you. Zarnay turns to face everyone unsure of where to look. And then with a quiet, mmm, she focuses her gaze on me. And in return, I give her a simple nod. Okay, go ahead. She opens her letter. Let's see, little mouth as though she, that were the signal that we decide on beforehand. And a few chuckles rise from the crowd. <laughs> Another wave of laughter floods the room. Well, stop laughing, people. So, you're making fun of me. Or more like, you're making me look bad. Well, you should have said that part sooner. Well, just get quiet. Everyone's still laughing at me, so I gesture to Arne that she should hurry up with the speech. So I want this to come to an end.
ユニタンの顔が顔が真っ赤で青筋マックスやで宇宙海賊が旅立つあるのに厳しいほんといい性格してんよなてめえはよさっさと宇宙に帰りやがれ他にも鉄人に死ぬパパに上政さミヌイに肉鼻にヤウナを名前を言えないぐらいのたくさん浜町町のみんなにありがとうお世話 Okay, so let's see what Arne had to say before she bows her head. So let's see. Okay. So everyone nods quietly in response. Arne stays silent for a moment before looking up and opening her mouth again. So it is kind of sad that I'm leaving soon, so I don't get to experience the four seasons that this planet offers. Yeah, that's right. Quest? So, what is the request? She goes on. Okay, sure.
and you just said okay off the bat. Okay, so no more of that embarrassing speech. Well, I'm sure it's the feelings that are wrong. <sighs> I'm back. Okay, so while Arne's speech was very thoughtful with lots of memories to share with everyone, it was also very embarrassing with Arne calling out the little problems that each other people have and ending it with, well, I want to see Shino and Keiji married with children. And I'm sure having a confession out of the blue, that's enough to make Shino and Keiji faint. So now that the speech is over, let's see how it picks up from here. Uh, I was going to carry her to the break room, but halfway there she woke up and started screaming at me to let her go. So the act of Keiji carrying Shino, that's a confirmation that they're meant for each other. And it's what triggered Shino to fall apart in the first place. So I take a sip of the tea Kumiko hands me and let out a deep sigh. Well, she doesn't seem like she's up to walking on her own yet. So I had one of the underlings carry her instead. Yeah, she said something like that herself. That she would die if I were to carry her. Well, does this count as a matter of the heart? Well, you've already been bugging me about that. So you really like sticking your nose in other people's business, don't you? But you know, you haven't made progress with that anywhere. Well, we're not here for your personal amusement. So what's wrong? Well, you are being awfully persistent today. Wait, what? Alright, alright. So if that's how you are going to think of me, then I won't stop you. So the problem is that, well, if you're senpai, you need to be tough and you need to be a good role model. And if you fall apart over this, then it makes you look weak. So Arne suddenly jumps into Kumiko's arms and receives a pat on her, the head. And it's as if she's paying a dog. Well, that was good. Arne, of all the things you could have chosen, why did you choose that as your parting gift? Arne, 
But why that? Zarnay points towards the mirror making townspeople. Well, even if Shino's dad is happy about that, I'm sure Shino herself is not. And I'm not sure if there are tears of happiness. Hey, um, so I don't need another person. So, what is it? A blackout? And I wonder if someone did on purpose, or it does happen quite often at the May Cafe. Sure, thank you. I hear Lily's footsteps disappear into the dark. And it must happen a lot because most people just calmly continue with the conversation. So, Kimiko, Arne, so are you girls okay? Well, what about you, Arne? And my eyes aren't used to the darkness yet, so I can't see a thing. Okay, so now he can see Arne. Well, Arne, is that you? So are those your eyes glowing in the dark? And it's freaking me out. Can you stop it? So I think Arne is using her powers to make herself glow in the dark. Well, I had no idea. I can only vaguely make out the silhouettes in the dark, but I can't tell that Arne is approaching Kumiko. And then, so what's the present that Arne wants to give Kumiko? So what's wrong? Um... So what is it? She must be trying to keep her voice down because she's embarrassed. In the dark though, that makes the whole thing sound needlessly H. Well, stop. So I should not be listening to this. I'll look the other way. I turn around and spot Unison. It seems like my eyes have finally gotten accustomed to the dark. Yeah, so what's going on? So you said that this happens all the time, but... Oh yeah, so we had a pretty big scuffle in here. And our plasma guns and electrified nets may well have affected the machineries inside the ship. Well, isn't this kind of a problem if the generators go down 
So can Lily really get them back up all by herself? Alright, so Lily's the one with the ignition key. And should we just wait here a little bit longer then? Well, no idea. Okay, so now the lights are back on. And when the lights are back on, another strange scene unfolds before my eyes. Kumiko is using both of her hands to try to push Arne's head away. And even in the dark, she's not about to let others have their way with her. So I think Arne's present for Kimiko is to lick her. Something that Kimiko doesn't want. So Kimiko, what's going on? Okay, I look at Kimiko and suddenly remember something. Okay, so Keiji has a clue about what just happened. Wait, Arne, are you? Kimiko gives her arm a squeeze. Her injuries. Wait, Kumiko's injuries? So during one of her Valora matches, Kumiko sustained life threatening injuries and they still impact her health today. Was Arne able to heal them simply by licking her? Hey Arne, well I told you that you should not do things like that without permission. Keiji. Kimiko gently pulls me back using her injured arm, the one she's currently undergoing, let's see, physiotherapy to fix. ボックスに乗るのが楽しかったから。楽しい。うん、そう、楽しかった。グミは？そりゃ楽しかったに決まってるじゃん。うん、だから。あれ<笑> ズルをしたとか、自分だけの力じゃないとか、そう思うかもしれない。その時は、春音を恨んでくれていいから。でも、これだけは約束して、ボークスには乗り続けて、もちろん、バロアにも。自分勝手でわがままでめちゃくちゃだよ。ずっと遠くに行く友達に言われたら怒れないじゃんか。本当辛い。全部アルネのせいにしていいから、グミは自分のやりたいこと楽しんで。アルネのせいになんてできるわけ
and Kimiko gives Arnie a tight hug. Okay, so I noticed that my episode is getting quite long, so I'm going to stop here and we'll see how the farewell party ends and how the launch event goes for sending Arne back into space. So I'm not sure if the licking did help cure Kumiko's arm, but at least it gave Kumiko the message that, well, after I leave, I want to still see you play with the Vorks machines and maybe the Valoa machines. And also, with regards to Lily fixing the Blackout situation, I feel that just restarting the system, that's only like a band-aid situation or band-aid solution to the problem. And Uni and Lily should be thinking of something more of a permanent fix. But I'm guessing that's part of the spaceship broken down and I'm sure they're waiting for support and parts from somewhere in our space and well I'm not sure when they're going to get their spaceship fixed so that they can return home to their planet too. But anyways that's going too far and with that in mind I'll see you later. <laughs>